If you have ever opened up a texture coordinate node, you have seen all these different nodes in it, right? What does all these nodes do inside of the texture coordinate node? And more importantly, when should I use which one? Let me show you how it works. So let's start by adding a UV sphere. So this is our UV sphere right now. I'm going to add a shade smooth to it. Okay, this is how it looks. So let's start by adding a new material. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use an image texture for this. This is a BBR texture I found. I'm going to drag and drop it over here so we can see easily what is happening with each and every single texture coordinate. Okay, this is what is happening by default. If I select this and hit Ctrl plus T, we get the texture coordinate and mapping node. You need to have the node wrangler add-on enabled for that. If I search in node wrangler, the node wrangler add-on should be enabled for this control T shortcut to work. Okay, so by default, we can see it's connecting the UV. And because we have used a default UV sphere, it comes with a UV map. So that is why the UV map is working. Let's use generated for now to see what is happening. Right now something weird is happening. From the top and bottom, the texture is looking good. But at the center part, it's kind of blending them together. It's stretching a lot. So if I hit 7 and go to our top view, you can see it's perfectly mapped. And if I go to the bottom, Control 7, it is mapping perfectly well for that as well. So what Flat is doing is, it's projecting this texture from the top and projecting its texture from the bottom. So what happens in the middle is, it's super stretched. Like it's connecting between these textures. So that is what is happening with the generated. If I'm going to use the object, that is also going to do the same thing. The scale changed. That's the only difference right now. For UV, the texture is mapping very, very well. We want a result something similar to this, but without UV unwrapping the model itself. So how can we do that? If I'm going to use generated, and I'm going to use box, you can see something just happened. Let me scale it up a little bit so we can see what's happening. Right now you can see, before the texture was mapping from the top and from the bottom. But right now it is projecting from all the sides. And if I'm going to add a mesh cube in here, if I scale it down, you can see that wherever the edges of the cubes are coming, that is exactly where the seams are also being made. So what is basically being done is, we are taking this image text over here and projecting as if it is on a box, on six sides. So that is why when we add a cube, that is where exactly the seams are placed. Okay, but right now, it is not looking good because the seams are very visible, right? And if you increase the blend value, it fixes the problem of the seams for us. Let me increase the scale and right now you can see like it. It's pretty good. You won't be able to see the seams. And this can be done for the object as well. And again for the object is the scale changes. It's basically the same thing. And now I want to tell you what a camera does. If I set this back to flat, Right now I am moving, but uh, the texture is sticking very well to it. So with generated what happened was, the texture was projecting from the top and bottom of the object. But with camera, it's doing the same thing, but it's not projecting from the top or bottom, but it's projecting from the camera view itself. That is why however we move this, the texture is going to stick to it. And the problem with this is, it's not going to work with animation. Even if the object moves, the texture is moving with it and that is a very weird look. If you are creating a still design, this will definitely work. But if you are going with animation, it, it breaks completely. The same thing with the window as well. It's basically the same thing, but the scale changes. Like with object and generated, the scale difference is there. The same difference is there with camera and window. A scale difference. So I don't use camera and window at all. I only use generated and object and UV. Now that is how it works with the image texture. But also object and generated have another big difference. I cannot show that with an image texture. For that I'm going to use a gradient node. I'm going to use our generated vector to vector, color to base color. Let's preview it. Okay, this is how it looks. Let's preview the gradient for now. So it's much more visible. So this is our generated. 
and if I change the location, I can change the location of the gradient itself. I can change the rotation of the gradient over here. If you want to see more about gradient textures, you can check out my tutorial. And right now you can see, at some point the gradient is also disappearing as well when I am rotating it. And the reason why the gradient is disappearing when I am using the generator is, is because of where the origin of the gradient lies. Like if I change it over here, you can see, the origin is somewhere over here I think. And that is where the gradient is pivoting from. It's a bit difficult to art direct it. But if I am going to use an object, Let's reset the values. The pivot point is going to be the center of the object. So the advantage of that is, if I'm going to rotate it, you can see we can easily control the gradient. This is not possible with the generator. So what happens with object is, the center point of whatever texture we are using, the pivot point of that is going to be the center of the object. So it's much more easier to control the texture itself if we are going to rotate it or move it. Just a quick break to tell you that this tutorial is part of a course I have made for Blender procedural textures. And if you are someone who have struggled to understand procedural textures and creating amazing textures inside of Blender, this course is for you. In this course, I am going to share all the knowledge I have learned after doing two years of every day inside of Blender. And the biggest advantage with using a procedural texture is that it is highly, highly editable and you can have complete control over it. So if this is something that interests you, do check out the course. Link in the description. Let's continue with the tutorial. And this doesn't make a big difference if we are going to use a procedural texture. Let's say a noise texture, vector to vector, fact to base color. Let's preview our noise texture. Let's reset this values. Again, if I am going to use a generator, the only difference is there is a scale change to it. Everything else is the same. And right now, if I am going to shift D to duplicate this, Scale this up by a lot and shift to deduplicate this, scale this like this as well. Right now if I come into my item, you can see the scale is not 1, which means we haven't applied the scale. And if I'm going to use the object and generate it, again the difference is the scale of the texture itself, everything else is the same. And what if I want this object also to have the same scale of texture as this one? Because as you can see right now, the scale of the texture has also become bigger with the scale of the object. So for that, what I will have to do is, I will have to use the object coordinate and I will have to apply this scale. And when I applied the scale, you can see the texture size became the same for all the objects. This couldn't be done with generator. So again, that is another small difference of using generator and object. And then the question is, what is the use case of this, right? Sometimes when you are using a texture for multiple objects and you want it to have the same scale without creating a new material, like if I'm going to hit this shift D, I can still use the generator. And if I'm going to change the size, you see everything changes, right? But instead, if I go over here, create a new material, and change the size over here, you can individually change the size for this one. And it will work. It will work perfectly fine. But imagine if you want to still use generator and you have to make the texture size the same individually for each 10 objects. It's going to take a lot of time. And that is why I'm showing you how you can use object to do the same thing. And you don't have to work that hard to make all the textures look consistent. And again, the only texture coordinates I use are either generated object and UV. I never use window, camera, reflection, normal. So I hope you got an understanding on how the different texture coordinates work and some of the difference between them. So the next time you are using a PBR texture or procedural texture, you have a better understanding on which texture node to use and why to use them. So thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.